Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Mid-Level Media Channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken. Today, guys, we are here to review another one of my favorites from my childhood. I know I just talked about Cry Baby on 4K being a favorite. We've got another one here today. This is the month of favorites uh, from my childhood. We've got South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut on 4K uh, UHD. So I'm very excited to get into talking about this one. This is a new release from Paramount Pictures. This actually comes out on June the 25th, so about a week and a half uh, from now. I got an early review copy in from Paramount to show off and review for you guys. So I have watched the 4K. I did watch a little bit of the Blu-ray. I've got the DVD that I'm also going to be comparing it to because I know there's a lot of chatter going around from a lot of people. It's like, do I need to upgrade South Park bigger, longer, and uncut? The animation style is already not the greatest. Like, it's not the type of movie that I feel like I need on 4K, which I understand that. But we're going to get into it, and I'm going to let you guys know. We're going to cut the crap. I'm going to let you guys know if you need to upgrade this one to 4k uhd if you got the dvd or you got the blu-ray is it worth that upgrade we're also going to talk about the film itself special features packaging audio all that good stuff in this review but before we get into it hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't already we talk about physical media on this channel blu-rays 4ks owning the movies that you love all that stuff there behind me every single day so if you like that kind of content hit that subscribe button okay so South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Cut, like I said, it comes out June the 25th from Paramount. It's available to pre-order right now. I will leave the link down below for $23.19 for the slipcover version, which is a very affordable price point, I would say. Yeah, guys, let's talk about this. South Park, Bigger, Longer, Not Cut. I'm going to talk about the movie first for a little bit. So I was, I had to have been 13 because I think this one came out in the summer of 1999, which would have put me at 13 years old. When I watched this movie in the theaters, I think my sister took me, she took me to a lot of rated R movies back in the day, and I don't know exactly, because back in the day, I think you had to be a parental guardian to get somebody in, and she was my sister, but she was like six years older than me, so it's possible she posed as my mom, and they just didn't care to check. I can't remember exactly how she got me in, but I used to see tons of rated R movies with her in the theaters all the time, and this was one of them, so I was 13 when I saw this one in the theaters. I was a huge South Park fan at the time. Like we had just got cable. I had just, you know, uh, started watching Comedy Central. I stumbled upon South Park and this movie in 1998, it blew up quick. So that's why they rushed into doing a movie on this because it just came out the year before and then they're already doing a movie in 1999. This thing took over the world and South Park is still going to this day. Like it still has seasons. I haven't watched it regularly since like the early 2000s. But it's still got seasons going on right now. It's like The Simpsons. It's like one of the longest running shows uh, going right now, which it, it's way different now. I feel like it's more of a commentary, like a social commentary, what's going on in the world, which is funny. It's definitely funny. But I feel like in the earlier days of South Park, it was more about the characters and it was more about the story. And you just kind of got into all the characters and, and their little like funny nuances and, and things and, and stuff. So I just felt like the stories or the episodes are more story based in the beginning, which I've got like this is to show you guys that I am a South Park fan since the beginning. But I've got these two VHS tapes right here still in the collection. South Park Volume 1, and they put two episodes on each one of these. I thought I had three of them, but I could only find two. This one has uh, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe and Volcano, and I believe that these are both from uh, Season 1. Um, and then we had uh, South Park Volume 2 right here, which has Weight Gain 4000 and Big Gay Owl's Big Gay Boat Ride, which I thought was hilarious when I was a kid. Weight Gain 4000 was really funny, too. though. So I've been watching South Park pretty much since the beginning, but... They came out with this movie. This is directed by Matt Stone and Trey Parker. And what I want you guys to comment um, in the comment section below. I want you to let, let me know what you feel about this movie. Um, also, if you're going to purchase this 4K. But let me know what your favorite song, your favorite musical number of this movie is. Because this movie is a full-on musical. And I don't think I realized it at the time when it came out. But just like I didn't realize that Disney animated films were musicals when I was watching them back in the day, which they absolutely are. Tons of musical numbers. But this has to be the most musical musical that I've ever seen. They are breaking out in the song like every five minutes. And I think I had the soundtrack uh, back when I was a kid as well. I remember blasting that soundtrack all the time. I thought all the songs were hilarious. I remember being in the theater, guys, when Uncle Fucker came on. And I don't know if I could say Uncle Fucker on YouTube, but I am in this video. Um, I remember being in the theater when Uncle Fucker first starts playing and the theater erupted in laughter. Like everybody was so into this movie. 
it was one of the greatest theatrical experiences like of my life. Like the theater was full because like I said, South Park was hot at the time. Like everybody loved South Park. The theater was full. Everybody was erupting into laughter. Like there's so many like fun moments and and bits and just like stuff that you can't say in movies anymore. Like they tackled in this film and it's absolutely fantastic. And you know, we all had senses of humor back in the late nineties. You know, it's like people weren't easily offended by stuff. This is a movie that I don't, I don't know if anybody has the balls to put a movie like South Park bigger, longer and uncut in the theaters nowadays. Like there, there are so many offensive things like all throughout this film. I don't think anybody could do it um, nowadays, but like I said, guys, directed by uh, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, who's I, I believe is pretty much written um, and directed like every single episode of South Park. I, I think there was a different writer on this movie, and I'm sure they got writers and stuff helping them do South Park episodes now. But I think in the beginning, like it was pretty much Matt Stone and Trey Parker that were doing like the whole thing. And I, I used to be such a fan of both of them. Not that they're still not great now. They're still doing their thing now. But I feel like they're just out of the spotlight now where they were they were doing movies where they starred in it uh, back in the day. Like Basketball. I would love a 4K release of Basketball. I love that movie. That's probably my favorite Matt Stone and Trey Parker movie. I watched that movie like over and over again uh, when I was a kid. But also Orgasmo they did. Team America, which I got a 4K release of over here, which I'm hoping to do a review for uh, soon on the channel as well. So they were, uh, you know, people that I really enjoyed when I was a kid. Just enjoyed their style of comedy and their style of humor, which... To be honest, it's pretty juvenile in, in certain aspects, but it's also extremely smart and also relevant to whatever time period that they're that they're spoofing on, that they're riffing on. Um, so I think this is still a really smart comedy. I think some of the the humor doesn't land for me as as well as it did back in 1999 when I was 13, but that's to be expected. I don't feel like I've really grown up a lot. So like I still feel like I'm pretty damn immature to be honest, especially with my humor. I'm really dumb. Uh, but there are jokes in here that even I at this point feel like, okay, that's just, that's stupid for me at almost 40 years old. Like that's, that's very juvenile. Like I would have to be like 13 or 14 again to really appreciate that on the same level that I did back when I saw the movie in the theater. So there's some stuff, some humor that doesn't land like it did, but there's stuff that still absolutely does land and is still 100% hilarious. Like the stuff with Satan and Saddam Hussein, like that stuff is still really funny to me. There's just some really great moments and the songs are very smartly written and they're actually like good songs. Like they're catchy tunes that I still enjoy singing to this day. Let's get into the 4K of South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. So this is a native 4K restoration. You got Dolby Vision, you got HDR10. So I've now watched this movie on 4K. I did pop in the Blu-ray to check out the comparison. I even popped in the DVD to check out some of the comparisons as well. And I've seen this movie on VHS. I've had it, had it on VHS back in the day. So I've seen this movie on four different formats in my life. Um, and I will say, this is a really nice 4K. For those of you all out there that didn't feel like South Park was worth the 4K upgrade, how I can sell you on this is the colors. Like the colors in this movie, I feel like more so than the actual TV show, are really enhanced in 4K with that HDR. So it does look a lot better, in my opinion, than the Blu-ray and the DVD. The colors are just much more enhanced. They're more vibrant. They're more in your face. They just pop. And there's tons of colors throughout this film. Like I said, the animation style and the drawings, which I do think is intentional. It's not great, but there are a lot of colors and there's a lot of a good you know, background imagery as well that looks very textured. You can tell there's just more depth and it's a lot deeper than when you would watch this on Blu-ray. The Blu-ray is just very flat. The colors are more muted. Like you can still see the colors, but they're just more muted. They're not as in your face on the Blu-ray and the DVD as they are in the 4K. So I do think the 4K, while not like the most impressive upgrade I've ever seen in my life, but I do think it's a pretty good upgrade when you compare it to the Blu-ray. Now, I don't do a ton of animation 4K reviews. In fact, this may be my first ever animation 4K review uh, that I've ever done. But what I'll say about this movie in comparison to the TV show, like, and I even remember noticing this at the time, the movie is much more cinematic. The way that it's directed, the way that it, it, it looks, it just looks a lot more cinematic 
the actual movie does versus the TV show. I think this does look really good. Like I said, there's some background imagery um, as you see the kids that look really good in 4K. It's very textured. Like the characters and some of the objects in the film are drawn, but the backgrounds almost looked real. And there's some moments like when Kenny goes to hell um, and you have some of these like CGI skeletons coming out and all that fire, all the fire looks real. The fire looks real, but the CGI skeletons actually look really good in 4k like none of it really looks fake like it all looks really natural and really good and the fire looks excellent like when he goes down to hell and first meets satan and saddam all that stuff like it just looks more real in the background like hell itself the landscape the hellscape if you will just looks a lot realer and a lot better um, in the 4k format than it does in the blu-ray and the dvd that, those are the first parts that i compared to the Blu-ray were those hell images. And there's obvious upgrades in overall clarity. The bit rate is higher than the Blu-ray. Like this is running at about 60 to 70 megabits per second. So it looks like it's running a lot smoother. It looks a lot clearer. Um, the colors are better. So I do think the 4K is a pretty big jump um, over that Blu-ray, but again, I'm not a professional like 4K reviewer anyway. I do like talking about this stuff on the channel, but, and I've never reviewed animation. So to me though, this is a big upgrade or a pretty sizable upgrade over that Blu-ray. And the DVD, like if you're still rocking the DVD, like the DVD looks like crap compared to the 4K. It looks a lot better on 4K. Now getting into the audio here, guys, you do have the Adobe True HD 5.1 and there was no real audio upgrade here. This is the same audio that was present on that Blu-ray release from Paramount Pictures. And I don't think that's a huge issue. Like the musical uh, numbers in this movie are great and maybe they would have sounded even better in Dolby Atmos, but... I don't think South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut is a movie where people are going to be clamoring for an audio upgrade. So I think the 5.1 is probably fine with this release and everything sounded really good and crystal clear uh, to me throughout watching this film. Now getting into the uh, packaging right here, I like this slipcover. Would I have liked the classic poster art like this DVD? Probably so with the 4K banner, but I'm more disappointed I didn't get a steelbook of that because I would have liked that. But this looks really... Uh, really cool though, guys. You got the theater, which is a pretty big theme throughout the film when they're going to see the Terrence and Phillip film. Um, you got Satan right there in the back, front and center. I'm a little disappointed that I don't see uh, Saddam. At least I can't make him out right here. Uh, Saddam Hussein on here, which is, you know, Saddam Hussein is a very hilarious like running bit throughout this movie. But I'll show you the spine right there as well. I'll show you the back. You got all the kids, classic, you know, standing right there at the bus stop, which is pretty cool. Uh, you do have the theatrical and the sing-along uh, versions on this release. The sing-along version is on the Blu-ray, which we'll get to in a second. You got the special features right there. Uh, you got all the specs down there at the bottom. And we'll go ahead and take it out of the slipcover. You got a nice 4K case right here. Flip it on the back, open it up, take out the uh, digital code. You do have a 4K disc and you also have a Blu-ray disc, which like I said, the Blu-ray is the uh, sing-along version of this film. And I don't know if you can watch the regular version on Blu-ray here, but this is the sing-along version on Blu-ray, which is basically, it just has all the words as they're singing along, which is kind of pointless to be honest, like especially if you have, uh, you know, captions, uh, subtitles. Uh, because you can just see all the words anyway. But guys, I guess it puts it in nice little, you know, neat form and kind of goes along with the words as they're singing. So it's cool, I guess, to have that on in this edition. I don't know if that edition was available on the regular Blu-ray release. You guys would have to let me know in the comments section below, but it is available on this release. Now, let's get into the special features real quick uh, because it will be real quick. There is almost no special features on this release. You have a commentary by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, and you have What Would Brian Boitano Do? A music video, which Brian, Brian Boitano, that's a really good song in the movie as well. And then you have some uh, theatrical trailers, which the theatrical trailers were on the DVD release, and that's the only special features this DVD release had. And I imagine the music video, What Would Brian Boitano Do? was was new to the Blu-ray release, and the commentary by Matt Stone and Trey Parker was probably new uh, to the Blu-ray release as well. So they added nothing new to this 4K unless the sing-along version was not on the original Blu-ray, then that was new uh, to this release. So a little bit disappointed in terms of special features. I don't know why they couldn't get Matt Stone and Trey Parker to come back and talk about this film for at least five minutes, some kind of an introduction or something like that. Maybe they weren't willing to do it, but I just don't know why they wouldn't be. Like, why would they not want to be involved with their 25th anniversary edition 
um, of South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut to give us some kind of like intro. A little disappointed we didn't get any kind of uh, new special features with this release. So that is one criticism that I can say about South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. But look guys, if you love this film, I think it's worth upgrading. I think it's a sizable and noticeable upgrade over that Blu-ray release, especially if you got the full setup, the OLED TV, like this looked really great on my OLED. And this will be my preferred viewing of the film moving forward. But thank you all so much for watching my review of South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe, like the video, turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. Like I said, I will link the 4K down below in the description and we'll see you next time.